button in the bottom right hand corner so just type a message there and i'll see it brilliant thank you katie um would you like me to let everyone in now or do you want a few more minutes to yes set up? sure okay brilliant i will let everyone in i'm going to go off screen now thanks Hello, Ellen. Hello? Hi, Ellen, I can hear you. Um, but I can't turn on my camera. I'm not sure why. Uh, not working. Still, still uh, not working. I'm not sure why. Um, let me see if the checking is correct. Uh, I don't know where to get the setting. But let me see. Can you can you see me now? Uh, no, not really. I can okay. see you now. Great. Oh, great. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, so let me see where I can share screen. Okay. Um. Can you can you see this? Can you see the screen? Yeah, it's very clear. Oh, okay. Wonderful. Um, so do we start now or do we have to wait for the facilitator um, to signal our start of the presentation? I guess Katie would be the facilitator. Okay, so maybe wait for her signal. And I, I could see her um, reply in the chat box. Oh, please start. Oh, okay. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Okay. Um, so there you go. Let me show, uh, let me go to the full screen. Sorry, uh, one moment, please. I'm not so, not not sure why I can't get this right. Okay, great. Okay. Um. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for having us. My colleague Nobolo, Nobolo and I are very happy to be here presenting to you our paper, Lesson Recordings in Post-COVID-19 Higher Education, Teacher Perspectives and Experiences. But before we start, we'd like to acknowledge that we delivered a presentation based on the same paper at the Chinese University of Hong Kong Teaching and Learning Innovation Expo last, last December. So this presentation will be largely similar to that one, but with some revisions and modifications. So here's what we are going to cover. First, we will briefly introduce the background of our research. Then we'll discuss our research aim and objectives, followed by a literature review and methodology. And finally, 
we'll be happy to share with you our results and discuss some of the key findings and their implications. Um, so first of all, let me talk about the research background. Um, obviously, we all know that the landscape of higher education has been transformed because of the outbreak of the pandemic back in 2019. Prior to the outbreak and the unprecedented disruption of the COVID-19 pandemic, the educational landscape of higher education was largely characterized by traditional in-person instruction and on-campus learning experiences. So basically, all the students had to go back to campus in order to have lessons face-to-face. -face. At that time, online education and virtual educational resources already existed in the forms of online courses and degree programs, but the availability of such options was limited. They were a nascent novel option for select student populations and various specialized institutions. So basically, what's being discussed here is MOOCs, short for Massive Open Online Courses, which target individuals, in, uh, individuals seeking to learn new skills or knowledge rather than as a mainstream option for higher education. Another example is programs offered by vocational schools and online universities, but those were not widely recognized as equivalents to traditional in-person degrees. However, the pandemic has significantly accelerated the adoption of these technologies and transformed them into a mainstream option for higher education. As the global community endeavored to cope with social disruption, lockdowns and large-scale quarantines, efforts to preserve the educational process accelerated the transition towards a virtual educational ecosystem. The virtualization of education has created both challenges and opportunities for us as teachers and educators. Um, this structural shift from traditional to online classrooms has resulted in a hybridized solution. So basically it's like both on and offline that integrates virtual learning resources into the scope of pedagogical tools. This revised interactive solution encourages student engagement, whilst also utilizing an array of innovative technological tools to assist teacher effectiveness and actively motivate student learning. Um, that was something unprecedented. Um, I still remember at that time, some of my colleagues totally didn't see that coming when the announcement that face-to-face -face classes were completely suspended was made. Across the Hong Kong University ecosystem, the emergence of hybrid learning has resulted in the development of new learner support strategies that include virtual lessons and an emergent platform of interactive gamified solutions. However, the most prominent one during the COVID had to be the use of recorded lessons. Now, as we can see, recorded lessons have played a central role in online education. From a, learning perspective, from a learner perspective, the use of recorded lessons allows students to self-pace their knowledge acquisition process, creating asynchronous opportunities for reviewing lessons, replaying teacher lectures, and exploring additional information independently. However, the focus is mostly put on the learner perspectives. We must also acknowledge the importance of teachers as they play a vital role in shaping students' learning experiences and outcomes. Therefore, this study focuses on the teacher perspective, contributing new insights regarding recorded lessons and their future role in Hong Kong educational institutions. Since teachers are the core members involved in the integration of digital learning resources in the lecture material, the primary aim of this study was to critically compare the perspectives of teachers regarding the efficacy and learning value of recorded lessons to identify strategies for improving future applications in university settings. Now, more specifically, we've come up with the following core research objectives. First, consult and analyze prior literature to develop a conceptual representation of digital learning in practice and classroom design strategies. Second, it is to identify the core expectations and challenges in designing recorded lessons, weighing the balance between delivery and receptivity in spots. The next is to conduct interviews with teachers to capture experiential feedback regarding recorded lessons and their, and their effects on the learning process from both perspectives. And finally, propose the best practices and strategies for improving recorded lesson design and maximizing student learning outcomes in virtual learning settings in Hong Kong higher education institutions. Now, while we are um, pursuing this study, there was one single central research question guiding this investigation. 
What perceptions and experiences do teachers report regarding recorded lessons and student learning outcomes in English、um, language education? This question focuses on the primary stakeholder in the lesson administration procedure, that is, the teacher, and the downstream effects of an emergent teaching modality. Recorded lessons on student learning outcomes as they relate to knowledge transfer and assessment performance. In addition to this broader question, there were four sub questions that were answered during the research process. Number one: What are the primary goals of recorded lessons, and how are such goals achieved? Two: What effects do recorded and virtual lessons have on student engagement and in the learning process? Three. How prepared are teachers for recorded lessons, and are there skills or resources needed to improve this role? And finally, what strategies or techniques could be applied to future recorded lessons to improve student learning outcomes? While trying to answer the question, the core research question right here, we got some insight from the literature during the research process. In particular. The following core concepts have been identified, and that helps us to conceptualize、uh, the whole thing here. So altogether, you can see six、um, different concepts here. So first, it is something to do with the accessibility, which can be seen as the availability of key coursework following lectures and classroom exercises, and two, engagement, which refers to students' active pursuit of knowledge and investment in the learning process, and three, reinforcement. Which is enabled by the supply and repetition of key concepts. Number four, student support, which is defined as the ability to monitor and support student learning with specific reference to recorded lessons. And five, knowledge building, which can be understood as the pursuit of new knowledge and competencies over time. And last but not least, reflection and improvement, the active evaluation of lesson value and student engagement through critical teacher and student reflection. Now,、um, these concepts can be visualized as a multi-layered solution and represented through this conceptual framework. At this point, we'd like to highlight the close link between this framework and our research question. So, once again, the research question is right here. So, basically, this framework provides a theoretical foundation for the research question, and this research question may suggest adjustments. Uh, I mean, the response or the answer we get from this research question may suggest adjustments to be made to the implementation of recorded lessons, and ultimately,、uh, it has the potential to provide valuable insight into how to maximize the contributions of recorded lessons while proactively preventing and overcoming potential challenges in the actual implementation. Having covered the conceptual framework based on literature review. We'd like to now move on to the next part, the methodology. In this research, a qualitative, a qualitative thematic analysis of specific teacher experiences and insights was conducted. We adopted we adopted this qualitative approach because of the following justifications. Now, first of all,、um, the scale of this research sample was inherently constrained. So basically, we are just interviewing、um, teachers. We are including teachers as core、cool、members, but not、uh, but not students. So the size would be quite small, constrained. Second, this pre、uh, this predominantly qualitative approach that the constructivist、uh, philosophy relies on can be applied to a critical and comparative a comparative analysis of part,、uh, participant feedback. Regarding recorded lesson experiences, allowing for deeper exploration of personal narratives and experiences. So basically, during the interview, we would like to let's say at least get some insight from the insiders, from the frontliners, or from the core members of the implementation of recorded lessons. We also believe that this method of data analysis can enable. Can they enable us to identify patterns and key themes emerging from the data? To be more specific,、um, the first step involves the sampling of participants. So, for the sampling,、um, it involved targeting teaching professionals with direct experiences with recorded lessons currently employed within the Hong Kong English Language Department and various higher education institutions. Following multiple series of emails, a combined sample of forty teaching professionals representing eight distinct institutions was identified. All of whom met the criteria for the inclusion in the study. The next step involves the interview, the actual interview part. So、um, it was done over a three-week period, 
and it was conducted individually in English using virtual resources including Zoom and Microsoft Teams. The instrument itself was purposefully limited in the scale to just seven questions. So these are the seven big questions. I'm sorry for the um, formatting here. I'm not sure why. Um, but anyway, um, so these are the seven questions. Um, the target are specific insights and experiences relative to recorded lessons rather than more general analysis of such solutions. So these are the seven um, questions. Number one, how do students respond to online recorded and, and recorded lessons? Two, how uh, what was the... Our primary impact of recorded lessons on student engagement in regular lessons, in coursework and assessment performance. And number three, um, what impacts did recorded lessons have on the selection and delivery of the lesson material, of the performance or approach to lesson planning? And four, is this um, uh, in an effective solution for university education? Why, why not? And then number five, how comfortable are you with the use of recordings for synchronous lessons? Does this affect the role as an educator? And six, what is the um, preferred mode of classroom delivery? And seven, what support solutions or, teach, uh, or teaching resources would you like to receive um, in the future university classrooms to improve learning, learning outcomes? So afterwards, we did the, um, after, after we did the interviews, we transcribed the interviews. So um, using automated online technologies. And the end results of this study were then analyzed thematically, thematically by applying Merriam's analytical thematic coding technique, which involved a line by line identification of major thematic, uh, thematic elements related to each of the targeted interview questions. In the following, I'll pass the turn to Noble to discuss the key findings and their significance. Noble, please. Thank you very much, Alan. So, before going through the results and discussion, let's take a look at the seven interview questions again. This first question prompted the teachers to reflect upon their online and recorded lessons to assess the typical student response. The second question focused more specifically on the performance effects of recorded lessons, highlighting a range of themes related to active engagement and conceptual awareness. The third question explored how the adoption of recorded lessons affected their delivery of teaching materials and approach to teaching. The fourth question investigated the teacher's view on digitalizing university education. The fifth question prompted into teachers' digital literacy and the perceived ease of using recording technology for their students. The sixth question prompted the teachers to indicate the performance and preference for the mode of delivery of rating um, different factors based on their own teaching pedagogies and student learning effectiveness. The seventh and final question invited the teachers to make suggestion on the support that should be provided to improve learner outcomes. Um, however, because of the time limit, we will only focus on three main questions, uh, namely questions one, um, question five, six, and seven. So for question one, how do students respond to online and recorded lessons? So this question prompted the teachers to reflect upon their online and recorded lessons to assess the typical student response. Um, in general, the feedback suggested that students responded positively, with P2 observing a positive engagement with the recorded lesson, um, lots of positive feedback. Similarly, P16 acknowledged a short learning curve and a successful level of participation and investment in the recorded lesson, and it's great for reinforcement of concepts. So despite these and many other similar experiences, there are several concerns about student responses. For example, P37 indicated that, I think there's an exception, um, expectation that you can slide by in recorded um, lectures. It affects the student attention span, and to be honest, it may have a negative effect on their knowledge retention. Also, P1 argue that it's too easy when there are no consequences for students. I can't track their level of focus. It gives a lot more freedom and some lack um, the discipline to use it wisely. In response to both the positive and negative effects of recorded lessons, the participants outlined the practical advantages of such technologies. P24 indicated that most of my students maintain their attention span in our virtual activities and were very 
participative in classroom discussion and active learning exercises. By combining recorded lesson with in-class exercises, i.e. Um, traditional or virtual, students were applying the knowledge they gain and reinforcing the understanding through practical exercises, according to P12. Um, Further, P40 indicated that there's a lightness, um, a level of freedom in the classroom now that students are not afraid of falling behind and can review lesson at home. This flexibility was widely cited as the primary benefit of recorded lessons, despite the other concerns regarding the depth of focus and effectiveness of such experiences. Although the procedural value of recorded lessons um, was expected, the feedback indicated that there was a continued expectation of teaching involvement and student support as observed by P14. Despite having the recorded lessons available on demand, I still encountered a significant number of students seeking assistance. So this really wasn't any difference to my um, traditional lectures. I think sometimes it's about reinforcing the adults and ensuring they have the concept right. So just now I've highlighted teachers' assessment of um, learning based on student response to online and record lesson. I would like to now focus more on teachers' view. So if you still remember, our research question is, what perceptions and experiences do teachers report regarding record lessons and student learning outcome in English language education? So knowing teachers' preference for the mode of delivery can therefore help us move forward and ultimately formulate the best teaching practices that will maximize students' learning. Approximately half of the participants in our study expressed the difficulty in um, the adoption of recorded lessons. For example, one participant found it challenging to carry out the um, teaching objectives and make video recordings available for all nine students at the same time. This feeling may be a result of the fact that um, everything happened so quickly as an autoresponder indicator that there is a learning curve to using the technology to um, record and making responding adjustment. So this feeling is even intensified when teachers were asked to deliver lessons in a hybrid mode, as there were a sense of performing double duty recorded lectures and then giving lectures, and it creates a significant time burden that we need to be supported in or compensated for. It's clear that the use of recording adds to the burden of the teachers, so it's not difficult to imagine that they might have a preference or um, for delivering lessons in a traditional face-to-face -face classroom when asked to indicate their preference for the mode to the mode um, of delivery by weighting different factors based on, their, based on their own teaching pedagogies and student learning effectiveness. So despite the advantages of recorded lessons, most confirmed by traditional face-to-face -face classroom were the preferred mode of delivery. With several key insights reported regarding um, teaching tricks and practices. So for example, P18 suggested that I value my time in front of my students and I value my ability to observe their reactions in class, to see if they are paying attention and the concept we need to reinforce them. And P21 further indicated that I think that we set a strong example in traditional classroom and there's no experience like learning face to face. However, as such, resources have um, evolved. P38 reported that there's a new generation of students who know only video and digital experiences. This means that they value teachers support them in the same way and it motivates their learning. Drawing upon this um, next generation proposition, P14 propose, proposes that um, we complete both in and online classes with recorded lectures. We shouldn't have to do this separately, it can be a simultaneous discipline that is posed online later to support student learning and self-reinforcement. So these insightful comments point to the direction that even though the face-to-face -face mode is preferred, we as educators must acknowledge the importance of digital resources that can add value to student learning. In this regard, the seventh and final question invited the teachers to make suggestion or the support that should be provided to improve learning or learner outcomes. 
So here are the recommendations. So um, first of all, so the use and the support for um, video gravity and uh, video coaching, enhance recording tools and equipment, uh, honor support portals and dedicated technological staff, IT staff, um, student test support, in-class um, video terminals, interactive digital resources, and time and, and additional support for um, labs and construction for video. So by exploring the responses to these four interview questions in our research, we can see that the um, feedback provided by these teachers suggests that um, digital and recorded videos offer opportunity to support those students who require reinforcement of key concepts and specific language learning needs. So for example, um, tones, meta, usage, um, usage, etc. So it's also observed that there is a developmental relationship between students engaged in self-directed behavior and knowledge seeking on concept acquisition and retention. Moreover, although um, these teachers report to support for more traditional classroom services, um, the successes they cite in this study indicated that further educational opportunities will include uh, a hybridized multi or multi technological solution that likely relies upon recorded lessons and lectures. From what we can see here, there are at least three pedagogical implications, but because of the time limit again, we cannot or we are not going to discuss them one by one in detail. However, it's clear that throughout the participant feedback, it's evident that while the intention of the provision of lecture recordings for students can have a positive impact on teaching and learning, the implementation may at the same time cause concerns and challenges for educators. Given the complexity of the issue, careful consideration and execution should be the top priority for any educators before rushing to record um, their lessons. So in terms of learner diversity and learning effectiveness, there is a value in the use of video recordings because video support has a reinforcement value for students of varying skill sets as they can address a diverse range of competencies and learning needs of students. Regarding interactions, things can get a bit tricky. While um, recorded lectures provide the benefits of flexibility and convenience, they can also reduce opportunities for interaction and engagement with teachers and students which are essential components of effective learning experiences. So in this regard, educators are recommended to consider how to maximize opportunities for interactions and engagement by incorporating interactive elements. Um, a further takeaway from our study is the value of videos as a tool for teachers' self-reflection to improve um, teaching practices. And despite the many um, advantages of offering recorded lessons, some teachers participating in this study have expressed their concern over various issues, ranging from students' um, dependency on video lessons and poor attendance in live face-to-face -face lectures, to the technical difficulty in uploading, editing, and sharing the videos. However, these challenges are in no way um, insurmountable. Rather, the solution lies in adapting to the new educational landscape and strengthening communication and collaboration between teaching and IT staff. For example, teachers should work closely with a dedicated team of IT staff responsible for sharing and processing the videos, such as setting a limit on the availability of the videos, adding interactive elements like pop-up questions in the video recordings. We believe that such a shift of responsibility from teachers to an IT support team can ensure that teachers can focus on teaching while supporting student use of video recordings. To conclude, there are two computer um, perspectives in relation to recorded lessons and the um, virtualization of university coursework. Number one, teachers prefer face-to-face -face courses. And number two, teachers value the additional digital resources provided to their students. So there are the references used in the presentation as a reference list. So if you have any question, please feel free to let us know and we're I'm happy to answer them during the open floor discussion. Thank you very much.
Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, thanks, Ellen. Thank, thanks, KT. Thank you, everyone. So that I, I now I guess that's the um, open discussion that uh, we are going to wait for the um, question or a suggestion or comment from the moderator or uh, um, for participants. If you got any question, you can also um, unmute yourself or or type in the chat box. Thanks. Hi, thank you both. Um, that was really good. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to stop the recording now um, and um, it will be made available for people afterwards. But yeah, I don't, I don't think there are any, any questions. So yeah, I'm going to end it now. But thank you very much. That was great. My pleasure.